Hello everybody, Joseph Buehler here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a skin texture brush for sculpting right inside of Blender, much like the one you see on the screen right now. So, uh, we're going to make this completely from scratch using no other uh, pre-made alphas or textures. We're just going to make it all uh, starting out with a simple plane. So, uh, right here in Blender, I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift A on my keyboard, add in a plane, pop into edit mode by hitting tab, and then I'm going to right click and subdivide this and then pulling up the uh, past operation menu I'm going to subdivide this 20 times alright and then the next thing I'm going to do is come here to modifiers give it a multi resolution modifier and then I'm going to subdivide this a few times uh, using simple subdivide so I would say probably about uh, Five is good. All right, and then we're gonna hop here into top view, and then I'm going to hit five on my numpad uh, to bring me into orthographic view. If you don't have a numpad, then you can use this icon right here. This switches between uh, perspective and orthographic view. Might be a little hard to tell right now because we're looking at a flat plane. Uh, but anyway, with that said, let's just jump into sculpt mode, uh, which you can uh, do by hitting Control Tab on your keyboard and then selecting sculpt mode right there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my brushes out here a little bit and I'm going to select the sculpt draw brush I'm going to come up here to my tool menu and then right where it says uh, stroke I'm going to come down here and uh, bump up the spacing a little bit and then I'm going to you know maybe bump it up. I think I want to bump it up to like around 150 145 somewhere around there and then for and then I'm going to uh, bump up uh, the jitter a little bit. And what this does, I don't know if you can see it right there. Oh yeah, I might want to bump my spacing down a little bit more. Yeah, something. Yeah, there we go. Something like that will probably work. And I'm going to shrink my brush size as well. So what this is doing is just adding in a uh, a bump, uh, kind of like a randomized bump and uh, this is uh, good for getting like uh, that those various imperfections in the skin and uh, you can change the size of your brush to um, alter kind of like the waviness of it and one thing I'm also doing is uh, randomly I'll either I'll hold down control and that will invert uh, the direction in which my brush is sculpting so if I Leave, uh, if I don't hold on control, it pulls the geometry up. If I hold down control, it pushes the geometry down. All right, so this is a good starting point for our stamp. And then uh, the other thing I'm going to do is select my draw sharp brush, shrink this down, might zoom in a little bit here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start carving in just some random lines, uh, which is also something that you see on skin. Now, I'm not using a reference right now, which I recommend you absolutely do. Uh, you do use a reference, so make sure you have some, you know, high, uh, some good uh, pictures pulled up um, of a different skin, uh, so you can use that to best replicate uh, the look that you're going for. But I will say I've uh, done this, I've tested this out a couple times uh, without a reference, just you know, using uh, the knowledge in my head, and every time it's turned out you know pretty okay. All right, so I think this is good enough, uh, at least for demonstration purposes. So what I'll do next is hop into object mode, and now we want to render this out as an alpha. So to do that, what I'm going to do is add in a camera again by hitting Shift A and then coming down here to camera. And then I'm going to pull out my properties menu here and then click on item and I want to zero out uh, the rotation and then I want the camera to be one meter above the ground so right here uh, under Z I'm going to hit one and then the next thing I want to do is uh, come over here to my camera data and then I want to switch this from perspective to orthographic and then for the orthographic scale I want to set that to two all right, and the next thing we need to do is make sure our camera aligns with the uh, plane that uh, so we want to make this a square 
So come right here down to output, uh, right here where it says resolution, you wanna highlight both the X and the Y, and then you wanna choose a resolution size for this. So I usually go with 4098, uh, which is uh, equates to a 4K image. All right, so next thing we need to do is add a material. So I'm gonna come over here uh, and hit vertical split and then bring up my asset browser because I've already got a material uh, pre-made. I've got this alpha material. So I'm gonna pull that over onto my object and it should be applied. So if I select my object and come over here to my shader editor, there it is right there. Uh, so let me show you what's going on here. First of all, I wanna thank uh, the YouTube channel uh, Blender Tutorial. I've I learned how to make this material by watching several of their videos. So I'm gonna pass credit on to them. So let me show you what's going on here. We have a uh, gradient texture node plugged into the material output. And then uh, I think we want factor plugged in. And then from uh, there, we, want, we have a uh, texture coordinate node plugged into a mapping node plugged into the vector of that gradient texture. Uh, from the texture coordinate, we have the object plugged into the vector. And then we've just got a few settings right here. Uh, that I want to point out. So uh, typically uh, this is set to zero, but for skin texture brushes, I find that a value of 0.1 works good. And then for rotation, we have the Y set to 90 degrees. And then for the uh, Z axis under scale, we have that set to like 3.2. But honestly, uh, these values aren't absolute. You can play around with these. Uh, to get uh, varying results, whatever results you feel work best. But these are the uh, uh, typical values you want to play around with. X under location, Y under rotation, and then Z under scale, X, Y, Z. Look at that, it, it's even in order. Okay, and just to show you what this is doing, I'm gonna pull uh, down a new window, 3D port, set to camera, and then set this to rendered view. And this is what we see uh, right here. Uh, now to edit this further, we can add in a converter. Uh, no, I'm sorry, a, wait, yeah, is it converter? Yeah, a color ramp converter. And then we can play around with these uh, values uh, even more. We can even add in a, uh, another one just to get different shades. I'm gonna remove that. Or uh, because I don't want completely dark spots in there, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up just a little bit right around there. All right, so I would say this is good to go. This is good to render. So we're gonna go ahead and render that out by hitting F12 on our keyboard. All right, so there it is. So we're gonna save this out. So you're gonna hit Alt-Shift-S. Very important, what you want, you wanna make sure that this is set to uh, black and white, first of all, and then you wanna make sure the color depth is set to 16. And then you wanna give it a name. As you can see, I've tested this out eight times already, so I'm gonna call this uh, skin test number nine. Hit Save As. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make our brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a um, new file. Go to my asset browser here and I'm gonna uh, pull in the default head that comes in uh, with Blender. And then with uh, that selected, I'm going to hit Control A and make instances real. So this just means we can edit them within this file. All right, and this should already have a multi-resolution modifier applied to it. So I'm just going to subdivide that a few times just to give it enough detail for our uh, skin brush to actually work. And then I'm going to pop into sculpt mode. And then let me go ahead and hide the face sets. All right, and we're gonna be using our uh, draw brush as our base. 
So uh, with that selected, you're going to come over here to Tools. You're going to check uh, Add Brush, and this is going to basically make a copy of it. And then you'll want to name this something unique. So I'm just going to call it uh, Skin Texture Brush. And then with that done, we're going to come down here to our Texture uh, Panel, hit New. And then we're going to open up that texture that we just made. So I have that uh, right here. Going to select that, open image, and there it is. And then coming back up here to tool, there's just a few things we need, a few settings we need to change in order to get this to work. So right under here under texture, we want to change mapping to uh, I'm sorry, to area plane. And right here under here under stroke, we want to change that to uh, anchored. And then under fall off, we want to leave this smooth. Um, but you can play around with these uh, settings and see which one works best for you, or you can create your own custom one. Um, I'm going to leave it at smooth for now. And then with all of that done, the next thing we want to do is just turn off pen pressure up here right under strength. And then let's just go ahead and give it a whirl. And look at that. It look, it's looking uh, you know, pretty decent. And uh, one thing you might notice is it's creating kind of like this, uh, this gradual bump. Uh, you can see that more clearly if I switch the fall off to constant. So a way you can kind of like fix that or um, make that less uh, noticeable is by uh, coming up here again under texture and under sample bias, uh, setting that value to, one point, uh, to 0.125. And when you do that, let me switch this back to smooth. You see it, that bump uh, isn't as noticeable. And there you go. That's how you uh, make a skin texture brush uh, completely from scratch. Uh, make sure that you have these save these brushes saved in a separate uh, blend file and that all the uh, users are set to uh, fake fake user so that way the brush doesn't disappear when you close out your blender file and then you can um, append these brushes um, into your various sculpting projects anytime you want and uh, you'll have those um, at hand without having to again uh, make them all over again from scratch. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next one.